about five minutes to let people show them. You can say hello. Hey, you're not even here. Good. Remember to share with them. Mommy, Mommy, Everybody, we're going to get started here in just a few minutes. We're going to wait and let the people join. No, that's set by the um. No, it's not ours. Aspen, will be here in the background noise. Yeah, he said it's in the back. We do apologize for our sound because that can't. That's hooked up through the um editor electric. While we wait on people to um come and join us, why don't y'all give us a beat? One minute, guys. Oh, 
All right, we're going to get started. We're going to welcome you. Uh, my name is Brian Coleman. I'm representing the Edisto Nacho Escuso tribe of South Carolina. Uh, today we'll be demonstrating our powwow drum, as well as some dancing and explaining the regalia that we wear and why we do what we do and whatnot. Uh, my, like I said, my name is Brian Coleman. This is Jordan Davidson. This is Michael Mucklebaney. Johnny Creel Jr. and Caleb Creel. And today we're going to be demonstrating the powwow drum. And I'll let Michael explain more. But first, we're going to give you a demonstration of what the powwow drum sounds like, and Michael will break it down after we finish. Southern drum and uh, southern drums uh, sing more with a low tone. Uh, you have southern drum and you have northern drum. Uh, northern drum is more of a high tone. I'm not going to demonstrate that today because uh, I don't want to lose my voice. <laughs> but um, most of our songs, uh, we, we call them vocables. Uh, uh, we do have word songs. Uh, we have a flag song, just like a national anthem. We have prayer songs. We have honor songs. Um, I can give a demonstration of one of the songs that we sing that has words. Um, it's Tagani Karakstoho Nagwa Staha Guys. And we put that in one of the songs that we sing. And it, it says, uh, We come to sing, get up and dance. Um, but from here, We'll go into our dance demonstration, and we'll start off with our jingle dress dance. Hi. 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 My name is Destiny Davis, and I'm one of the jingle dancers. Eliza J. Coleman. And my name is Kimberly, and I live in South Carolina. <laughs> and I live in Ray's Valley. <laughs> What's your name? Brooke. Brooke. My name is Brooke. 
Mrs. Anne Marie. Hey, Brooke. <laughs> and um, the jingle dance is a healing dance. Um, years ago, um, there was a grandfather who had a granddaughter that was sick, and um, the spirit came to him in a dream and told him how to make the jingle dance or the jingle dress, and told her or told him to put put it on his granddaughter and have her to dance. And the more she started to dance, the better she felt. And at the end of the dance, she got she was healed. And um, every jingle that we have on our dresses represents um, a prayer. And there's supposed to be 365 for every day of the year. So now um, we're going to demonstrate the jingle dance for you. You guys can ask questions as we go live. I can read them and we can get you the answers for you. You can just put a comment in the comment section if you got a question and I'll, I'll answer them. <laughs> they can all follow behind us. And that's our jingle. And next we have our fancy dance, ladies fancy dance. And we'll let her uh, talk a little bit about and who she is with the side. Uh, my name is Little Gray Eagle, descendant of Chief Gray Eagle, also known as the Edisto Princess. Um, I'm a fancy shawl dancer, which represents a butterfly coming out of its cocoon.
Ja. They ain't been in powwow in a long time, so they're getting happy. And now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're going to talk about the grass pants a little bit. Uh, this is the style that I do. Um, this dance was originated in the Northern Plains. I said that uh, when the natives would settle in a new area and uh, the grass is real high, of course, the grass dancers would come in and dance the grass down so they can settle, uh, build camp, or just a place to have the ceremony. They would begin to tie the grass into their regalias, which is what this modern day uh, yarn or ribbon represents. Um, three pushes. <laughs> As you'll see, what I do on the right side, I'll normally try to do on the left side. And you'll see me jumping down, like jumping down the ground. That's why they call it the grass. Great job, great job. Where is this at? We're gonna... We're at, hold, we got a question from Keith. He's asking where this is at. This is at our tribal headquarters right here in Ridgeville, South Carolina. It is the Edisto Nochi Cuso Tribes um, Community Center. Right, 
Right now what we're gonna do, if I can get Destiny and maybe the young ones, you can do a couple, uh, a round dance is what we're calling. The beat is like a heartbeat. So it's a little different from what you just heard. And um, what they're gonna do is gonna follow Destiny around. Just a little two step, double beat. Destiny eleven. Ian wants to know what is considered the most difficult dance to learn. Well, they would say men's fancy or women's fancy, technically, but that's probably the most athletic one that you have to do because you got to have a lot of breath and move really fast the entire song. So, um, men's fancy grass, women's fancy, or ladies' fancy shawl. Yeah, that's a workout. That's going to, you can lose some pounds. Um, Alice says, do you all give drum lessons? Say that again, you guys, because the car was going by. We do for the tribe, you said Alice? Alice Geddes Nesbitt. Yeah, we, we try to bring up our young ones up to learn the drum from the same. Now, uh, I'm mean, gonna go ahead and put this out there. I, I said it last week. Around the drum, to sit at the drum, to play the drum, men are only allowed to uh, sit at the drum and sing. We allow the women to stand around on the backside and sing along. Um, I know I'm out of breath right now, so I let Sabrina tell you to kind of uh, let you know why. <laughs> the reason to be in that women do not play the drum but we can sing behind the drum is because men cannot carry a baby women we get pregnant we carry the baby so we have two heartbeats at one time in our bodies so for the men of course because we're native that's our heartbeat is what we consider our drum so for the men to beat on the drum that is the closest thing that they will ever get to pregnancy. So it's not a disrespectful thing as people like to think. It is actually the men playing the drum is actually a respect towards women and care and childbirth. You're on it. All right, You're so on this it. one will be a, a double beat. And they'll demonstrate the dance to a double beat, a typical double beat. So the beat's going to be a little different. It'll sound like a heartbeat.
Um, we said last last week, but just to recap for everybody, um, Destiny, can you stand right there so I can use you? Um, as you can see, that her regalia is not a costume. Um, it's kind of really offensive to call a Native American regalia a costume. Um, this particular regalia um, I made, but um, everything on it is authentic. It was handmade all the way down to the cones. Um, that's what makes it so personal to a dancer. It reflects them. It's a resemblance of their personality and who they are. It's disrespectful to actually take pictures or touch a Native American regalia without the permission of the person wearing it. Um, don't be offended if some of them say no. It's just something that Native Americans do. Um, like we said before, with Destiny, and she's a jingle dress dancer. Hers represents prayer. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Her represents prayer. So every cone on her dress, if you can see, every cone represents a prayer. So that when she dances to the beat of the drum and the noise that it, or the sound that it makes is a prayer going up for everybody or whoever needs healing in the community or a particular person. Michael is a, our grass dancer and he explained his. And that's about all we can say about regalia besides what you, you know, already knew from last week. Like, like she was saying, our, our, our regalia is uh, very personal to us. It may be favorite colors. Um, my regalia has, resembles my, my native name which is running wolf, is which I have the wolf uh, on the front of my aprons here. Um, for everybody that's wanting to know, this on top of my head is called a roach or a ropecia. It's made out of porcupine quills, deer hair, and you got a buffalo tail in the back. And of course, these are imitation eagle feathers. And that's really it. <laughs> how Mary wants to know how many tribes are in the area. Mary, in South Carolina, there's a, a actually there's a lot of different tribes. I'm not really sure of the number, um, but around this area, in Ridgeville and Cottageville, I think we're about the only one here. You can go up towards Monk's Corner and and stuff like that, and it's um, I think it's Barnertown. Um, I know up in Conway, Myrtle Beach area, there is the um, Waccamaw people uh, in Orangeburg. There's and up there towards there, the Santee, Sumter, um, PD. Um, so there's plenty of tribes in this area. Matt Mardell likes, he said, awesome job, everyone. Thank you. Will you have a powwow next year if the pandemic settles? Yes. <laughs> As you see, they're all powwow ready. <laughs> but we are actually thinking that um, we're still debating. We should know this Tuesday if we're going to have our homecoming powwow. I know we will have something. I just don't know if it's going to be a full-blown powwow for everybody to come. Um, but we are having, and that will be in the... Um, it's the weekend, the second weekend in October will be that date. If we do decide, uh, we have to go with the tribal board's decision. But if we do decide, we will post it on our page and put out flyers and everything that we need to to let as many people as we can to know of that date. Please follow our page. Yes, y'all can like us, try our p tribal page. We have a Facebook. We have a website. Um... You can come out here and see us. Um, we're a nonprofit organization. If you want to support us, you can just send donations. Um, if you want to send donations to support us, um, you can send it to Sabrina Creel at 1125 Ridge Road. 
Ridgeville, South Carolina, 29472. Um, Alice, we, right now we don't do any lessons for tribal traditions. Um, we do teach our people from youth up, but I mean, we used to, before the pandemic came about, we were doing craft classes and language classes and tribal, well, powwow dances um, every other Thursday um, at 7 o'clock. But because of the pandemic, everything is kind of stopped and shut down right now. So, uh, you want to get a cozy yeah. So now we're going to turn it back over to Brian. So as you said, Friday... We can't just leave this drum any type of way. We have to close it out. So right now we're going to do a closing song around the drum. This is usually when everybody circles around us. So we'll have all the ladies come over here and come around us. And we're going to close this drum out with a closing song. This is also a prayer song. Men supposed to take off their head stuff? Unless you have <laughs>
Thank you guys for watching.